at the start of last night's Line of Duty was undoubtedly, and many have called her the loathsome yet brilliant <laughs> Anna Maxwell-Martin, who plays the formidable <laughs> DCS, Patricia Carmichael. Well, so, could she be the fourth H? We'll be turning the tables on Superintendent Hastings' arch enemy in just a moment. It's so good. Brilliant. Anna Maxwell-Martin joins us now. Lovely to see you Hi. again. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Look at that smiley face. Hello. That is not what we watched last night. No, it's <laughs> not. Oh. So, <laughs> when, when you got this role um, and when they pitched it to you, was it you that decided who she was going to be and what face she was going to wear or, or, or did they suggest it to you? What face she was going to wear? <laughs> um, <laughs> I went to my wardrobe and picked my, the face. <laughs> um, I could, do you know what? I can't really re remember now. I got the script. It was a long time ago, isn't it? Because it's last a couple of years ago. I got the script and um, I don't think I thought very much about it at all until I got, got there. And then um, there were a couple of bits where she was a bit uh, nasty and I suppose I just went for it. <laughs> it, it and now she's sort of morphed into a, into a, a horror show, yeah. Yeah, she really is. I mean, you only have to sort of look down on social media and everybody, the moment she says anything, everybody kicks off. They absolutely hate her. But on paper, from yeah. what we're led to believe, she is one of the good guys at the moment. Or is she? Well, you know, I think she's just uh, misunderstood, isn't she? she <laughs> she's just trying to do her, her job. And maybe she... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. She probably just wants a nice cuddle, doesn't she, Pat? She's um, <laughs> she's just a bit cross. Pat. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I don't know about a nice cuddle. I mean, you reckon that she's insecure? <laughs> yes, of course she is, Phil. I mean, all those people. You know, she. Um, yes, you, you've got no idea what's going on at Pat's house. I mean, she could be going through all sorts. Um, <laughs> she's um, yeah, she's. Uh, she she is a bit of a, a a power freak, isn't she? I suppose. Well, she she knows what's happened. I mean, we saw last night. Obviously, you've got with Kate, and she knows for a fact that when Kate's got off this killing of Ryan Pilkington, that it was her that sort of shot those fatal shots. Um, and she's not really buying any of it, but there's nothing she can do about it. We know we've got one more episode to go. This sort of final extra episode. Is she going to be gunning for Kate, or do you think she's got bigger fish to fry? I, I just have no clue. I mean, it's, it's tough to answer. I think, um, Don't spoil luckily it. for me, which, well, what protects me from all this questioning is when I was filming Line of Duty, I was filming Motherland at the same time. <clears throat> so I was like going between the two. So I was sort of like, um, I was just like r rushing on to each set and uh, just going blah, 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 and then going to the next set. So, I just can't remember um, anything. I mean, I didn't see it last night, and my friends were saying, what's she doing now? And they're going, she's in an interview. And I was like, right. I, can't, I, can't, I just can't really remember anything. Either that, or they, do, they play some trick on you, and when they drop you off at the airport in Belfast, they sort of, like, blank your mind <laughs> so that you can't... Um, you can't remember anything well, about let me, what, what let me you've remind done, you of something done, that, or where that, you've been. Something that set social media alight last night um and uh and don't don't claim to me that you can't remember this moment so when you're in the interview <laughs> <laughs> that's very aggressive Bill. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're in the you're in the interview room and you tap the pen four times let's just have a look at this moment what is shown in image 47 no comment image 47 shows item references tg11 I that's mean... H. That's H in Morse code. <laughs> I think I was just bored, you know, because you, you, those scenes are very long. So I think I was just like, where, what's, what am I saying next? Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are, I mean, you are such a brilliant actress that you could really just be pulling the eye wall over our eyes completely here, and I think I think that might be what's happening. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness! So, so as far as uh, let's let's talk about your uh, relationship with uh, with Ted, because um, Adrian Dunbar 
it, it's it. such a fantastic actor. It's a, it's a great teaming between the two of you. Uh, absolutely head to head. You have some pretty intense scenes there. Yeah, Ted, Ted needs to toughen up a bit. <laughs> Poor old Ted. I really feel... I'm worried about myself because I feel like people really absolutely hate me because they love Ted, don't they? Um, we had a great time last season because we had all those interview scenes, which were really good fun. Um, they are proper... Uh, I don't know. I don't, don't know, quite know the right word. She's, she's definitely his nemesis, and that's Ooh. really good fun. And we... Yeah, we have good fun doing the filming the scenes. It's good. Um... I think when we did our research with you, you were driving in the car and you had your kids in the car with you so they could hear everything our researcher was saying. And I think they, they, they got in on the act here because they were, they were asked, you were asked um, to the children <laughs> which character that you played do you most resemble in real life? And, and they said you were a mixture of DS, uh, DCS Carmichael and Julia from Motherland. <laughs> That's quite a blend. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, no, it's, that's a scary blend. I mean, that's like, God, um, I shouldn't be mothering. Um, <laughs> but uh, the kids were in the car. No, I was, I was, they said to me, who, uh, you know, who do you mother like, mother, Julia, or are you like... And I said, like, no, of course I'm not like either of those two people. And then the kids obviously piped up. Yes, she's incredibly passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> she shouts a lot. <laughs> she's absolutely crackers. So apparently I am I am exactly the same as those two people in the way that I parent. Do Which you... is frightening, because I think the idea of Pat being a parent is terrifying, isn't it? <laughs> yes. But my my mum, when I was younger, although she probably still does it now, but used to do the face. Um, and uh, and I knew when she, especially if we were in company, and then she would just, she'd be, I, I'd say something and she'd just go... And I know I'm in yeah. trouble. Do you do... Patricia Carmichael face to your kids. <laughs> um, and what is that I face? And what, <laughs> yes. yeah, if not, you should do, because that's a good one to have in your armory as a parent. I'm going to do the pat face. <laughs> can we see? Can we see the Patricia Carmichael um, face? I don't, I don't know what the face is. Do you mean the face when when she's? Smiling? No, when she's, no, no, when she's absolutely one. not smiling, when she is actually just about to leave the room after devastating the when entire When someone's just said, no comment. <laughs> um, I don't know what the face is. I think I do, I think I do give them the face occasionally. I think I do... I think I save the face for very special occasions <laughs> when they really need to, to get a grip, the kids. Uh, when I'm really at my wit's end. I mean, don't don't all parents all parents have the face, don't yeah. they? I, I think, think we do. Actually. I'm hoping all parents have no, that do, face. No, we do. We do. Yours is just a really good one. Pat's is a really good one. That's the yeah, face all yours, parents aspire to have. I can't believe we're calling her Pat now. She's not. Really I mean, they do. We sometimes when I do the face. Starting this interview, we were going to start they, calling her well, Pat. Well, the kids do Pat. sort of cower. They do cower away from me, so I think that probably I, I can be a bit scary. I need to get that in check, don't I? Yeah. No, you really don't. I mean, she's such a brilliant character. What you are doing, though, which I can't... I, you must be so looking forward to, is getting back into the theatre. And uh, this is after June, when the theatres are fully, fully reopen again. You're in the West End show, Constellations. I mean, more than just the fact of getting out there on stage, just what that symbolises for actors like yourself. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought it up, Holly, because I was going to sort of like try and chew it in at the end. But it just is, it, if people feel they, they can go, uh, uh, it would be lovely if they could, if people could sort of buy lots of theatre tickets and, and bobble along. Because the, um, that area of our industry particularly has um, been really hard hit. And I don't just mean <clears throat> actors who are reliant on the theatre who maybe don't do so much TV, but I mean that there's a whole spectrum of people who, who work in that industry, you know, lighting guys and carpenters and front of house and all those people, and that's that's been r really, really difficult for a year. So um, so I'm I'm really pleased, yeah, to be going back into the theatre. I can't wait. So it's um it's called Constellations, and I think you go to the, Don, the Donmar Warehouse website, but it's in the West End, and it's Chris O'Dowd and I, and it's just, uh, there's four couples doing the same place. So you can pick which couple you want to go and see. And um, yeah, it feels a massive relief that, that theatres are going to be open. And um, yeah, 
I'm really happy about that. I know. I mean, that yeah. absolutely vital an industry on its on its knees. So uh, yeah, we'll all be buying yeah. tickets to things we don't even know what they I are. Know. Exactly. And uh, and it's you, you. I think you're there from the uh, from August the sixth at the Vaudeville Theatre. And um, and of course you've got um, have you, Motherland is starting again. Are, are you having another another one of those? Motherland is out soon. I don't know when. We did a Christmas special, didn't we? And then we, at the same time as that, we filmed a series. I think that's on soon, May, maybe. Um, yeah, so that's out soon. So uh, that's, um, there's some good stuff in that this year. Yeah, I think you, you think you said that there, that obviously we never want to spoil anything, but, um, but there are a couple of big reveals. One happy one, one sad one. Yeah, there's a sad, uh, there's a sad reveal, but there's also an Absolutely brilliant reveal. <laughs> Good enough. Find really funny. Um, it's uh, it's so so lovely to talk to you. Every time we do it, it's just so brilliant. You are so different to Patricia Carmichael. It's incredible. <laughs> I'd like to say watch next week for Line of Duty and all will be revealed, but we know it won't. No, it probably won't. Um, it probably won't. Nevertheless, who knows? I don't know. No, well, I'm sure you I mean, do. as I said, I, my mind's gone blank. Yeah, yeah well, that's handy. a very nice out for you to take, <laughs> but that's, that's fine. It's OK, because we wouldn't want to spoil it. Um, it. Line of Duty, it uh, concludes on Sunday at 9 on BBC One, um, and it's lovely to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. You too. Lovely to see you. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, Bye. now.